In this video, I'm just going to go through a quick example for uh, Math 311 at the University of Calgary uh, this spring 2022 uh, semester. So um, in this example, we're going to look at the set uh, big W, uh, which is going to be all vectors x, y, z belonging to R3, of course. Uh, such that 2x plus 3y plus 4z is equal to zero. And the goal in this video is to find a basis for this set. So in the, you know, a previous video I put up, I, I talked uh, in excruciating detail about the uh, the definition of linear independence and, and linear dependence and the importance of knowing definitions, right? So again, how are we going to solve this problem? Well, if, if there's, there's no hope for us to have any idea about how to approach this if we don't know the exact precise definition of basis. So what is a basis? Right, A basis for a vector space um, uh, is a set B of vectors. So in this case, uh, I'm, I'm defining what it would mean to have a basis for W. So this would be a set of vectors in W such that, and there's two things that this has to satisfy. So one, it needs to be uh, linearly independent. So B is linearly independent. And the second thing is that it needs to uh, span all of W. So if we, if we were to take the span, which is, and we'll need to know the exact precise way of writing this out in a moment, so it's the, the span is the collection of all linear combinations of vectors in B. We want that thing to be the totality of W, right? So what this is saying, in essence, is that um, a basis for, for B to be a basis of W means that everything in W can be written as a linear combination of things in B, and it is done so in a unique way. That is exactly uh, what it means to be a basis. So let's dive into this question. And uh, first, I'm going to work in uh, just orange. And everything you see in orange, this is my rough work. So this is not what I'm handing in on my quiz, on my exam, for my homework. This is stuff on the scrap paper. This is stuff on the you know back of a page. These are things that I'm not handing in. But it's the rough work that I need to do in order to figure out what the answer is. Right, okay. So I want to find a basis. And so we want to, we want to sort of play around with this set of vectors. And we're looking for, um, you know, we want to make sure that this set is linearly independent. So we want to make sure that we eliminate any variables that might be, uh, might depend on the other variables. So if we think about some typical uh, vector in here, x, y, and z, right? Well, we know that x, y, and z obey this equation, right? 2x plus 3y plus 4z is equal to 0. So is there any way that we might be able to write one of these numbers in terms of the others? That is, is it possible that one of these coordinates of the vector depends on the other two coordinates? Well, this is basically asking the question, can we isolate a variable here, right? So we have something like 2x plus 3y plus 4z, well, uh, equal to zero. Well, if I move this to the other side of the equation, I have 2x plus 3y equal to minus 4z. Um, and then, well, I can get rid of this uh, minus four, just divide both sides of the equation by uh, minus four. And uh, doing a little bit of simplifying on the way, I get minus one half uh, minus uh, three over four y 
is equal to z. So we see that actually uh, uh, z can be rewritten in terms of x and y. So I could rewrite this vector as x, y, and now I can replace z in terms of x and y here. Um, now the question might be, well, could I then find other dependencies, say for x and y? Yes, but here's the, here's the problem. If we were to use this equation again and say uh, I moved x over, right? I would get 3x plus 3y uh, uh, plus, plus 4z. Sorry, there should be 2x. And in fact, I'm going to just sub, uh, move it over to the other side of the equation. Again, you know, I, I, I divide um, everything by, by negative 2. So without even simplifying this time, we'll see that, yeah, I could write x in terms of these, but then I'm reintroducing z, right? And, and the whole point um, of, of using this equation to get rid of z is, is to sort of remove the unnecessary variables, right? We know that z is always going to be written in terms of these two other variables. So returning uh, to this question, the guess, I don't know yet, right? I don't actually know because I haven't proved anything, but the guess is that um, I'm, I'm not going to be able to remove any more dependents, right? Uh, so now I would like to, to break this open um, as an expression where one depends on one of these two scalars that I have and the other depends on, well, that other scalar. So, so what I mean by this is I want to, to write this now as the sum of two vectors, one whose entries only depend on x and the other whose entries only depend on y. So in this first vector, I'm gonna write those things that depend on x. Um, well, it's just x. And in the first coordinate, well, I better put that zero because I want that to add a uh, backup to this first entry x. Uh, in the second coordinate, uh, it's essentially the opposite situation, right? There's, there's no dependence on, on x here, um, and there is one copy of y, if you like. Um, and then finally, down here, we see that we have a one-half x uh, contributing from this term, and over here, we have a, a negative uh, three-fourths y contributing from this term. Um, so now I want to put the scalars out in front, right? So um, Perhaps I should even back back up a moment and and uh, remind you. You might be confused. Oh, why is this uh, uh, the thing I'm I'm looking for, right? So so remember, um, in order to have a, in order to have a basis, uh, what I'm looking for is essentially uh, uh, vectors v one, uh, v one, v two, and v three plus a3 v3, uh, such that everything in W can be written uh, in this way. Or, or uh, it could be that there's just two vectors, or maybe there's even just one vector, right? Depending on how many are, are in that basis. But I want to find some set of vectors uh, such that uh, you know I, I have particular fixed vectors, and then everything in that set can just be written as uh, some linear combination of those vectors. So. Um, so, so I want to have things written, right? I want to have my scalars like these a, um, AI out in front of everything, right? So uh, rewriting this, I pull out my scalar. I'm going to have one, zero, and minus one half. And here I'm going to have y, uh, zero, one, minus three over four. Okay. So now, if we think about this, we actually, we started with an arbitrary uh, vector of W, right? And all I did was just expand this arbitrary vector. So it seems that uh, certainly uh, the span of W um, is at least contained in, in the, the span of these two vectors, right? Uh, so great. And um, so, so, so that gives me good hope that, that the second condition will be satisfied. Uh, the other thing I need to know is that these vectors are linearly um, independent. And if you sort of look at it, 
Um, we'll have to prove this formally in, in a moment, um, but it, this seems reasonable, right? There's, there's um, you know, a non-zero entry here uh, and a zero entry here and a non-zero entry here and a zero entry here. It seems like things might match up. Um, so let's go ahead and try and prove these things now, right? So we have our guess. Our guess is that um, the, 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 the set of vectors that, that's going to form our basis, so maybe I should call it B, is this set. So we have these two vectors. This, this is our guess uh, to form a basis. And um, in fact, just to make some of the, well, no, I'll leave it like this. I'll leave it like this. Maybe I'll say something um, about what I was going to say towards the end. Okay, so how do we actually prove this? Um, well, first we need to first we need to show that there is uh, no um, non-trivial linear combinations, right? So remember our our definition of linear independence. I want to prove that these are linearly independent. So uh, suppose uh, c one c two are real numbers such that so remember, we need to we need to start off by supposing that we have a uh, some linear combination where, where we're not assuming anything about what those coefficients actually are, and we need to prove that uh, it forces those coefficients to be zero. Uh, so one and minus three over four. Right. So so this is what we start off with, and our conclusion that we're looking for. Um, is, is we want to somehow prove that C1 and C2 are both have to be zero. If that's true, we will have verified uh, the definition that th this set of vectors is linearly independent. Uh, so what can we do? How do we make any progress here? Well, yeah, I mean, just looking at this expression, um, I've got I've got scalars in front of my vectors, and I know I can scalar multiply. So again, it's 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 not even that right now. Me making this video for you, I've I've worked out the answer ahead of time. I have it, right? Of course, I have some intuition about how this this problem is going to go, but it you just sort of look at it and you're like, well, I have to try something, right? This could be a dead end. This could be a dead end. Um, so let's just try it, right? So let's multiply in the scalars. C, so here we have C1. Of course, C1 times zero is still going to be zero minus C1 over two. Uh, C2 times zero is still going to be zero. C2 and minus three, uh, C2 over four. Okay. And okay, is it obvious that um, oh, and, and it might help to expand uh, this side of the equation, right? So the zero vector we know just looks like these columns. Okay, so again, uh, maybe not maybe not obviously clear how we make progress. So um, what else could we do to this expression? Well, I see a plus sign here. I could add these vectors together. I don't know if it's going to work. But it's there. It's something to do. It's something to try. So let's try it. So we add these vectors together. And what am I going to get? C1 plus 0 is just C1. 0 plus C2 is just C2. And in the bottom, I have minus uh, C1 over 2 minus 3 C2 over 4. OK, that's a messy looking expression in the bottom. Ah, But now what I have is just a single column vector on the left and a single column vector on the right. What does that mean? Well, in order for one vector to be equal to the other, that means exactly that each of their components are equal. In other words, that means that this first component, zero, has to be equal to C, one. Oh, that's something that we wanted to be true. We look at the other component. Oh, zero has to be equal to C, two. Well, hang on. Those were all the coefficients. So we can simply conclude from this by saying something like, therefore, uh, we see that C1 is equal to C2 is equal to 0. And thus, we verified
that B is linearly independent. And it's probably fine that, that you use, uh, you know, that abbreviation on a quiz. Um, that should be fine. Okay, so we want to show, uh, we've shown that this is linear in, linearly independent. And now the other thing we need to show uh, in order to convince the reader that this is in fact a basis is, is that we still need to show that the span of B uh, is equal to the entirety of W. And this means precisely two things. To be formal, to be precise, um, this means, I mean, one, one way to show, um, uh, uh, this may be a little bit overkill, um, um, but remember one way, what, one way to show that, you know, two sets A and, uh, and C are equal is to prove first off, you know, if A is in A, then A is in C. In other words, to, to prove that A is a subset of C and then separately, if uh, C is in C, then uh, uh, C is in A. In, in other words, uh, to prove that C is a subset of A, right? Um, and, and this part is, is essentially uh, easy, right? So here we can look back up to our rough work and it's essentially going to uh, follow this pattern, right? So first I'm gonna show that, that W belongs to the span um, of, our, uh, of our set. So um, here's how I might begin. I might, I might say let, um, X, Y, Z belong to W. Uh, thus, um, and in fact, um, to to make this proof um, um, even nicer, we we already know that our um, that our coefficients. Uh, uh, we already know from a rough work what are the coefficients uh, are going to be for our basis set, right? Um, so we want uh, our the coefficient of our first vector is simply going to be x, and the coefficient of our second vector is is simply going to be y. Uh, so we, in order to conclude that this vector um, is in the is in the span. Um, uh, well, first, we, we want to show that it's the appropriate linear combination. So we might say something like observe that um, x times 1, 0, minus 1 half plus y times uh, 0, 1, minus 3 over 4 is equal to um, and I'm going to combine, uh, I'm going to do a few steps at once here. You might want to break this into a, a, a few more steps, um, working backwards a little bit more slowly. Uh, so this will be x minus 2 minus 3y over 4. Um, um, and now we might say something that, uh, uh, to the effect of uh, since, since x, y, z uh, belongs to w, we know that by definition, uh, 2x plus 3y uh, is equal to 4z. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, plus 4z is equal to 0 which implies that uh, uh, 2x plus 3y is equal to minus 4z, uh, which implies that uh, minus x over 2 minus 3y over 4 is uh, equal to z. Uh, thus, x, 1, 0, uh, minus one half plus y times zero one minus three over four equal to x y uh, minus x over two minus three uh, y over four uh, is equal to x y z. 
so what was the point of that? I mean, the point of that was to show that uh, we wanted this vector to be in the uh, the spanning, uh, the span of these two vectors. So uh, just to sort of conclude this part of proof and, and remind the reader what it is we've just done, uh, uh, thus, right, x, y, z belongs to the span of, I could just write B, but I'll also, you know, to, to make things pretty clear, I'll write, uh, I'll write our set B out explicitly. Right, so that's the first part of the proof, right? I started with an arbitrary vector belonging to W, and I was able to conclude that, in fact, this arbitrary vector I picked in W does belong to the span of this set, and since I picked that vector of W arbitrarily, I can now conclude that in fact, every vector of W belongs to the span of these two vectors, that is to the span of, uh, of B. Um, and so now we wanna go the other direction, right? So I wanna start off with a, a, a vector in there. So um, I might write it something to the effect of, uh, suppose the vector V, is in the span of B. Well, remember the span is the set of all linear combinations of the vectors in that set. So what that means is, remembering our definitions, because we're studying them all the time, uh, thus, there exists, and uh, just to help differentiate some, some uh, concepts here, um, I'll maybe use different, uh, different variables here than, than X, Y, Z, just to sort of, um, I mean, at the risk of some confusion, but I just want to drive home the point that these, uh, these are just variable names and they can be used interchangeably, right? So I'm going to say there exists um, A1, A2, and this is just following the definition of, of a spanning set, uh, which are real numbers such that V is equal to A1 times the first vector uh, plus A2 times the second vector, right? Okay. And I want to I want to make sure that this looks like something um, that is in W, right? Uh, so so what am I going to pick? Um, so we already know that our that our a one should be um, x. We already know that our a two um, should be y. And what should our z be? Well, we we are we know from this condition here that that this is what. Um, our uh, uh, z should be. So uh, we might say something like um, observe that for, and now we offer up a choice of, of x, y, and z. So for, for x equal to a1, y equal to um, a2, and z equal to minus uh, a1 over 2 minus 3, A2 over 4. Um, we have, and let's write out this condition. So, so uh, we, we want to prove that um, we're, we're going to come up with a vector x, y, z that, that belongs to w. So we need to prove that that x, y, and z satisfy that defining condition of, of w. So we need to prove that that 2x plus 3y uh, plus z is, uh, plus 4z is equal to zero. Well, 2x is 2a1, uh, y is a2, and 4, or uh, z is minus a1 over 2, minus 3a2 over 4. Expanding this out, so I still have 2a1 plus 3a2, uh, minus minus 
two a one after multiplying this four in minus three a two and sure enough we can see now uh, that these will cancel out right the the two a the minus two a one uh, the three a two the minus three a two so that is in fact equal to zero. Uh, what does that mean? Well, that means that therefore. Um, X, Y, Z is equal to W. But wait a second. What was that? What was that X, Y, Z? Why were we picking that? Particularly because those were the X, Y, Z um, that's going to be equal to our vector V that we wanted to show um, was in, in W. So we might say something now uh, to the effect of, and since. Now we want to show that this vector is equal to the vector that we started with. So since x, y, z is equal to, um, and, and we want to show that it's equal to v, right? Because again, ultimately our goal was to show that v is in w. And to show it's in w, we have to show it of the appropriate form according to the definition of w. So, uh, so this was a1, a2 minus a1 over 2 minus a uh, minus 3 a2 over 4 equal to and remember we're trying we're trying to show that this is this is v right so we're trying to unpack this and get our expression for v here um, again i'm going to combine a couple steps at, at once because this video is starting to get kind of long um, but unpacking a couple steps um, working backwards through some previous calculations, um, you should reach this statement, um, which of course, this is exactly how we wrote V. So finally, what does that tell us? That tells us that V is equal to the vector um, X, Y, Z. And we know that X, Y, Z belongs to W. So finally, um, we've now completed the proof of the second condition. So we should sort of inform the reader where we are in this argument, right? Sort of the end of, you know, we've taken a breath. So, so um, we might say something like this concludes the proof that we're proving the second condition, right? So this concludes the proof that the span of B is equal uh, to W. And hence, so remember, we already proved the first part that B was linearly um, independent. And hence, that B is a basis for W. OK, so that uh, ends this video. Hopefully, uh, you didn't fall asleep. There was a lot of um, monotonous math. Uh, but please let me know if there's other questions from previous worksheets that we've done that you'd like me to go over. I can't promise that I'm going to, because all of uh, this is completely outside of my paid uh, TA duties. I'm just doing it because I love to hear myself talk about math. So. Uh, thanks for tuning in.